Hey Raiders, how's it going? Uh, hope you're staying safe inside during this interesting time. Uh, I'm here with one of our fans and friend, uh, Suzanne Sumner. Am I saying that correctly? Yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, we are at Andea's again uh, because I thought we'd try it out because I don't think we really gave it a good test to run. So uh, we're gonna try it out. And uh, do you have anything to say about yourself? Like who um, you are? Um, Just, I don't know. <laughs> lived in North Carolina um, most of my life. I'm an engineer for Pfizer, um, work on the manufacturing floor, which I really like, love being outside, and I really enjoy Ray the Quarry's music. Um, I really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, uh, so let's get started with this uh, quick ice cream thing. So I got, or she got me, ube, which is like some yam flavor, it's purple and then pistachio to go with it. It's all the rage in the Philippines, so. Wait, really, the Philippines? Yeah. Wait, this all the time? Yeah, not the combo, but the purple flavor. I mean, yeah, it looks good. It makes me think when I look at it like the Hulk. It does, it's a good combination of those colors. I'm just like, yeah. I mean, I like the contrast, so why yeah. not? Uh, and what did you get? I got lavender lemonade. So it's a mix between sorbet and ice cream. Okay, there you go. Uh, so I'm gonna give this Taste test and see what the thing. It's really interesting. Okay. How is it? Very yummy. Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you want to taste? No. I don't know. I mean, you're welcome to it. I'll try it. It's got like I think it has coconut in it as well. Mhm. Mm but it really like hits you. Yeah, it's definitely a, a different flavor. I, li I like it. No, I, I really do. It's, it's not something definitely that... coconutty, you could tell. Well, I do like coconut, so. Yeah. A plus. And then pistachio. Mm. Okay, that does not go together, but. <laughs> no. They're pretty good. It's very, um, you know, creamy. Mm -hmm. Which is what you want in ice cream. Exactly. How would you say yours, yours is good one? Mine's really good. I like how it's the mixture is like light and refreshing, like sorbet. Right. But then it's also creamy in certain bites too. It's like, it's like you get the mixture of both, best okay. of both worlds. Yeah, you want that, so. Yeah. Okay, so overall, I think this is a lot better than the last time I came here, but also the last time I came here. I think, yeah, I threw some cheese in the Harris Teeter uh, freezer <laughs> to pretend that we were not trying ice cream. And then uh, we tried it in my car. I think it's better out here and also when you actually take time to pick what you want rather than your friend just like blindly choosing. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a lot better. Hey Raiders, we're here Raiding the Creamery, episode four. We're here at, uh, you should know, the grocery store. And we are here to get pimento cheese. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a lot better. I, I would give this an overall rating of a four instead of my last one. So, out of five. Pretty decent. Uh, if you come here, they also have two locations. They have one in, I think this is West Cary. Yeah, this is off of Green Level Church Road. Yes, and they have one in um, East Cary on Ryan Road. Yeah. Ryan does not live there, but I mean, look for him. Uh, yeah. So, uh, let's get let's get to the fun part. Uh, so. This is the part where we ask questions and you get to know maybe something about me, about the band, or just something fun. So, okay. what do you got? So, what is your favorite song to perform live? Okay. Um, there's a lot. Uh, I... Wow. I've played a lot. Uh, so, there's some songs we've played that no one's heard of, but those aren't my favorite. I think my favorite probably has been have Your Cake to Eat It too, which is the title track of our new latest album, Temporary Cemetery. Because it just really comes with like a heavy hitter, uh, low note, and all that high energy. So then it just really gets the crowd roaring. Plus, it's just fun to jump around to. So. Yeah. So is there a signature move that you do on stage? Jumping? Have you ever dove into the crowd before? Yes. So I told Travis this story one time. Uh, so I'll answer that question in a second. Or the the story about it in a second because it's just worth it. Uh, so my favorite thing to do is after Fox Muller, I like to get on the ground and do that spin twirl thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw it one time. And yeah. just get on the back. That pack Palooza. Yes, that's that's my signature move. And I used to get on top of ramps and jump off of them. But I realized that was a bad idea because 
Uh, one time I decided to jump in the crowd when there was only 20 people. Worst idea ever because I sprained my ankle, but I like landed the fall, almost fell and broke it, but then like twisted it instead. And so I had to get on the stage and finish the last couple songs limping. Oh, that sounds real. <laughs> but it was all right. So, I mean, my bandmates were just out like laughing during the song because they're just like, look, there goes Aaron. Because the stage I thought was like three feet. He was actually like six feet tall. I was like, that's not bad. Worst thing. That's like how I feel with rock climbing. I'm like, whenever I boulder, I'm like, oh, like there's only like, it's like, I thought, well, I actually like opposite. Mm. Like, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm dropping like six feet, but really it's like two feet that I have to like right. drop. <laughs> I like can't let like, go. Your depth perception is just like way out the window. It's like, it could be that far, it could be yeah. that. Can I go for it? So that, that was, that's when I learned not to do some things, but I've learned to do some things better. So I'm always trying to find something better to do for a move. So I'll usually look at bands and be like, what did they do? How can I implement that? So. So is there somebody in the band that does most of the songwriting or is it a good mix of everybody mm. that helps out? So uh, I would definitely say the main writers of the music tend to be the singers. Uh, so the guy that has the curly hair, his name's Daniel. And then the guy to the left, who looks like he's just a robot. So that's because he's doing so much. His name's Brian. They tend to come up with like a bunch of stuff throughout their life and just write stories. But recently we've been trying to write like collaborative or coming with pieces. So like right now I'm trying to write a song with Daniel about like current things that have been going on in my life and what I've been doing like to try and bring something to light. So, so we tried to tell stories and bring about that so we could connect with people. So how long have you been playing the bass? Or just, okay. <laughs> are there any other instruments you play too? Um, so this will surprise some people, but I used to actually play tuba and I hated music when I was a kid. Worst thing ever, I like, I never wanted to do it. So I did that when I was like fifth grade to 11th grade. And then right when I got to the end of 11th grade, my uh, teacher was like, yeah, I know you're not suited for tuba. Try out uh, electric, uh, this upright bass. And by the way, you got seven months to learn it because we're going to go play in Nationals. I was like, great. So I learned how to play it and I was like, this is quite fun. So I picked up a bass, got some lessons, and started playing. So I've been playing probably about 10 to 11 years. So, good amount of time. So, outside of you know your, the band's music and stuff, what's your favorite, what are some of your favorite covers to play? Mm. Uh, Definitely anything by the Foo Fighters. Mm -hmm. Love that. Uh, Blink-182, Yellow Party. <laughs> Not Yellow Card. <laughs> yellow. Uh, yellow Card, they're fun. Um, Amberlynn, definitely Amberlynn, because uh, that's one of the reasons I started this band. Was, uh, I loved Amberlynn's music, I also Skillet, and then uh, a band that most people don't know, the Classic Prime. Which, without that band, I probably would have not been in this band together because I put up a Craigslist ad. And just because I mentioned that band, uh, Daniel said Amberlynn's not with it. Oh, that's cool. It's yes. funny how stuff like that happens. It really is. I was like, oh, okay. And then I was like in another band trying to form another band. And just... That's awesome. Yeah. So if you could perform anywhere in the entire world, what would be your hmm. top choice venue to perform at? If I knew the venue names, it would be great. Uh, probably uh, somewhere in California, like one of the big... I don't know venue names, but wherever like any big games play, like Coachella or something like that, play something like that. Just really that way you could have a different experience. Because we played in like a small atmosphere and that's more personal. You get to kind of know the fans, but in a bigger crowd, I've never done that. It's like everyone's kind of cheering, things are going on, you never know what's gonna happen, but it's also a place that you can actually, potentially your music can reach more people. So. Yeah. There's a lot of good. A lot of good venues in California. Yeah. It'd be cool on the beach, too. Yeah, the beach is what I was thinking, because originally when you asked me, I was thinking Hawaii. I was like, I, was I, don't, people. I don't know who goes to Hawaii to see a band. I don't so. know. There's probably people out there. I mean, yeah, I'm sure there are. But... Right. Any other questions? Or... So, personal-wise, what's the weirdest ice cream flavor that you have had to taste before? Or combo? Probably this. <laughs> I mean, this is definitely a weird combo, but it's good. It's just odd. Uh, I still have to say it's the one I told you earlier before we started. Travis's Cox mint chocolate chip ice cream with a lemon. It was, ugh. And then Ryan Spalding had one that was like pawn ice cream. It's like some Indian leaf ice cream flavor. It, just, yeah, it wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. It was not something that would go with Snickers. 
Oh no. So <laughs> that's a mean combination. Well, that's what my other friends tend to do. They tend to come over here and be like, "Let's do that," and I'm like, "Okay, that sounds great." The guys. Yeah, it tends to be the guys. When I check out my other, because I used to be in another band called Clever Measures, I check out the lead singer that's a girl. She was like, I'm going to get you Snickers and Oreo. And I was like, oh, okay. The guys were just like, no, we're getting this. Like the worst one they tried to get one time is went to Sunny's Guys. They tried to get uh, black licorice with popcorn. Not good. No. Thankfully, they did not have it. Yeah. So I was, I was happy. So. All right, well, this has been uh, Raid the Creamery. I don't remember what episode this is, um, but stay tuned on our social medias because we are gearing up to do some new stuff during even this COVID stuff. So we have live streams, not really live streams, we put up a, a video of us playing a live performance of one of our songs in the basement. You can check that on YouTube, Instagram, uh, usually it's going to be once a week. And we're getting ready to film a video, so be prepared to look out for that. Um, and stay, stay raiding. All right, bye.